Hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. My name's Peter Waters and my amateur radio call sign is Golf 3 Oscar Juliet Victor. You know, one of the interesting things in ham radio is antennas, of course, and it's always interesting to look back over the years and see what antennas have come up and disappeared and perhaps have just disappeared because not many people use them. I was looking back through some radcoms and I came across an antenna which I hadn't actually heard of before, but when I looked at it, I thought, well, this is quite an interesting antenna, really. So what I thought I'd do is just sort of go back onto into this radcom and show you the antenna in question and see what you think. It might well be interesting, particularly for those with small gardens. And of course, this antenna appeared in none other than technical topics, one of the most famous um, columns in Radcom, or the bulletin as it was then, I think. Uh, um, it was conducted by Pat Hawker, G3VA, and it had lots and lots of followers. We always used to look forward to technical topics in, uh, in the bulletin. Well, this particular antenna was described by Pat Hawker uh, quite a few years ago. So let's take a look at it. Well, the antenna I'm going to describe actually appeared in the October 1976 of radio communication so by that time the bulletin had become radio communication and of course now it's radcom i do wish they'd make up their minds the aerial we're going to look at today is the half quad antenna and i think it's works on a similar principle to the half square antenna and i did a video on the half square antenna a couple of months ago and i'll try and remember to put a link below this uh, video um, but just to refresh your memory or to um, give you a sort of brief rundown on a half square. Half square antenna is a half wave length of wire there. And we've got another a quarter wave length of wire there. That's joined at that point there. We've got another quarter wave length of wire there. We've left a gap because at that point there it's low impedance. It's a current point, And we can feed the half square with coax cable there. And in that form, it gives 3 dB of gain. It's broadside to the run of the antenna, so the radiation pattern is going exactly through the screen, center of the screen of uh, whatever you're watching this video on. Uh, now, what I recommended in my video was that we actually grab hold of this quarter wave length there, and we move it up. I'll get this to move <laughs> we move it up there join it at that point there so now we've got a complete run of wire it's actually a, a, a full wavelength and we can feed it that's a high voltage point we can feed it at that high voltage point using a 49 to 1 unun now what you might say is the point of doing that well it's a very important point actually if we imagine that this antenna was designed for 40 meters, we've got a 20 meter run of wire there, 10 meters there, 10 meters there, and it works well on 40 meters. That's assuming we feed it at that point there. If we close that point off and feed it with a 49 to 1 and on there, we still get the same performance on 40 meters. But that full length of full wavelength of wire on 40 meters becomes a half wavelength of wire on 80 meters and we know that if we put a 49 to 1 anon at the end of a half wave we can make that antenna work on harmonics so what actually happens is with the dimensions for 40 meters which is 20 meters 10 meters 10 meters whilst we can preserve the performance of the um, half square antenna and get the 3D began on 40 meters. We can also operate this antenna on 80 meters. And because it's an end fed half wave, not only will it work on 80 meters, and 80 meters and 40 meters, it will also work on 20 meters, 15 meters and 10 meters. In other words, it's the harmonics related to the 80 meter band. And that works pretty well. I've had uh, one in my garden actually, which is, um, um, uh, designed for 20 meters, 20 meters. So I've got a, um, a, 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 a 10 meter run of wire there, five meters, five meters, and it works well. And of course, it also works on 40 meters. Now, what 
happens with a half quad? Well, two things happen. First of all, we grab the, we'll grab this wire and pull it down so that it's earthed. And I grab this wire here and I can get it to move. I'll get it to move so it's just above the ground there. And I bring this down like that. Now I have to tra change the dimension. Well, now I've changed the dimensions, you can see that we've got, instead of a half wave, we've got a quarter wave there. And instead of a quarter wave, we've got an eighth wave there. The reason being that this actually is half a quad loop. A quad loop is a quarter wave on all four sides. It's a square quarter wave on all four sides. So this is only half of a quad. The other half, you'll have to imagine, is a mirror um, on uh, below below the Earth there. The far right of the antenna is now earthed which means we've got a current point there. And that also creates a current point on the left-hand side where we can directly feed with coax cable. And here's how the half quad was presented in technical topics. And you can see the similarity of the concept between that and the half square antenna. So let's now take a look at uh, what the possibilities are for a half quad in a small back garden. Now here's the basic half quad and I've designed this for 20 meters but you can scale it up or down but for a small garden the attraction quite clearly is the dimensions we've got a horizontal dimension there of five meters which is well within the capabilities of um, many small gardens and the verticals are two and a half meters. Now, just to recap, the five meters is a quarter wave on 20 meters, and the 2.5 meters is an eighth wave. Remember that the other half of this square would be uh, a mirror image down there. We have to feed it with coax cable um, because we've got a low impedance point there, and the reason we've got a low impedance point there is because this end of the antenna is at earth potential so that's a current maximum there we have a voltage maximum up there and we have a current maximum here because it's vertically well predominantly vertically polarized because the current feed is is actually in the vertical section there we need some radials and this was emphasized again in technical topics you do need some radials but we know um, in recent times we've found that the radials are it's not so much the length of the radials as the number. And I would say if you can put about six or eight, um, say two meter long radials at either end, um, that will suffice and, um, and get, you, uh, get you on the air. The big attraction of this, of course, is its size. It's very, very compact. And because it's basically a loop, the loop will also resonate on the harmonic and the harmonic of 20 meters is 10 meters. So this antenna, compact as, compact as it is for 20 meters, will also operate on 10 meters. And of course, these vertical sections will be um, a full quarter wave on 10 meters. So it does hold some very attractive possibilities for those with small gardens. And of course, as I said just now, you can scale this up. If you wanted to scale this up, um, for 40 meter operation, then we'd have a, a 10 meter length there, and we'd have five meter verticals there. And again, the principle of re operating on harmonics would apply. <clears throat> now it's worth following this article through, and it's actually put forward by PA0RCH. And it stems from the fact that going back to the even 1920s, it was realized that short vertical antennas were not very efficient. Now, when they say short, um, I think the part of the spectrum they were covering was the high end of the medium wave bands and the lower end of the short wave bands. So we're talking about probably 1.5 to 3.5 megahertz. And 
if you're going to put a vertical up for those frequencies, uh, even a, a reasonable size vertical is still electrically very short. And it was realised that uh, uh, the radiation capabilities of short verticals was not particularly good. What they did discover was that if you, instead of having just one vertical, if you had two vertical antennas spaced a tenth of a wavelength apart, that increased the radiation efficiency of the antenna. And if you had four um, verticals spaced a tenth of a wavelength apart, it increased it again. And they were talking in terms of 3 dB and 6 dB. Now, don't get too excited about that because they, we, we don't actually know what the length of those verticals were and uh, therefore it's very difficult to sort of evaluate it. Anyway, the, the point is that PA0, RCH, was convinced that if you had two verticals rather than one vertical, particularly on, uh, say, 160 meters and 80 meters in an average garden, then you would get better efficiency. So let me now put up on the screen um, just very briefly, uh, the the idea that he put forward in improving the performance of a 160 or 80 meter antenna in a smallish garden. So let's take a look. Now, when you first look at this, it looks a bit daunting, but in fact, it's not quite as complicated as it may look. First of all, you've got this uh, half quad, and you've got the coax feed there. That end is earthed and this end um, is a current point and you've got radials at either end. What um, PA0RCH is proposing, and this is for either 80 metres or 160 metres, is he has top loaded whips and imagine that the, top, the end of the whip is there um, and you've got a top loaded whip, you've got a coil and a capacity hat. And you can always imagine that whip was going straight up there rather than being bent over. The reason it's bent it over is because he's joined them together. So he's got actually two top loaded whips joined together. And once they're joined together, basically you've got the advantage of two verticals um, with this supposed or claimed 3 dB gain. He doesn't actually give any details of the performance, but uh, he's quite enthusiastic about it, and I can see the I can see the whole point of this. You've got two um, top-loaded uh, whips, uh, which are relatively um, quite short relative to the frequency, and join them together, and feed them at one end with coax cable, and you have a uh, an improved performance. There's no dimension shown there, um, and I'm assuming that roughly. He's got a tenth of a wavelength space there for 160 meters. Um, a tenth of a wavelength um, on 160 meters is, um, uh, what is it, uh, 16 meters. Uh, so I've got a 16 meter um, space in there and pro rata that for uh, 80 meters. But he, show, he gives no dimensions for, for these, these, these coils or capacity hats, but it's, uh, it's an interesting idea. If you're a 160 meter or 80 meter addict, then you may want to try it. But for me, the more interesting aspect of this was the half size quad, which does hold attractions for a small garden. So there we are, yet another example of a compact antenna for a small garden. Hope it's proved of interest to you, and uh, when it gets a bit warmer outside, maybe it's worth trying because it doesn't cost too much at all. All you need is some wire, a um, bit of coax cable, and obviously you need a, um, a means of supporting it, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. So I hope you found it interesting. Thanks for your support on this channel, much appreciated. By the way, um, we've got a bargain basement on our website, I notice at the moment, with all sorts of things. We've, we've been a little bit of a turnout in the warehouse. <laughs> we've found all sorts of odd things. So go onto our website, have a look at the bargain basement section, and uh, you might find something of interest there. In the meantime, enjoy your ham radio, you take care, and as usual, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. <laughs>